Hello, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Jake here. And today we're working on David Kilmister's pedal board for the upcoming Roger Waters tour. Okay, so this is the board as it is at the moment. It's come to us exactly as it was from his last gig on the Roger Waters tour. So the first thing we're going to do is get everything off it, strip it back completely and start from scratch. Oh, you get the easy one. <laughs> so one of the things you'll notice, a lot of this stuff is really super stuck down, which is because it was going on a you know, on tour, being thrown in the back of a plane all the time. Um, I wouldn't normally, from like for example, my own board, which is just going in the back of a car, going to you know a few gigs a year. I don't have to put that much pedal board tape on, but for a touring rig like this where things need to be absolutely anchored down, it's important that they don't move. Okay, we're getting there. So everything's off now, the board's basically clean. So there's a couple of little things like a bit of perished foam here. Um, you know, we'll clean all that up. I'm gonna retask a few of those cables underneath, but this gives us a really nice clean platform from where to start. You know, just make it look really nice. This pedal board, the actual board itself, was built by Chris at Custom Pedal Boards. Mm -hmm. And he does a lovely job and they're so solid. You know, so if you are doing any serious tours, you do need a serious flight case. But check this out. It looks amazing. Look at this. This, Look man, at that. Isn't that great? On. Beautiful. Like okay. a posh car garage. <laughs> <laughs> them hanging out the bottom, all shiny and beautiful. Your rims. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, and there's all of the shenanigans at the back. And now we're going to put everything in its loops. Here we go. There's our logo so far. Cool. All right. Let's get wiring. Get to it. Okay, it's the end of the day. I'm desperately trying not to get glue that it's on my fingers all over the camera. <laughs> um, so where are we at? We're we've, basically there. We're basically there. So we've got, uh, let's show the audio underneath. We've got everything routed in the back of G3. So pretty. And then down here, and the power supply, the Gen X14. But yeah, we are minutes away from testing everything. It does look very nice though. Gotcha. Uh, looking good, so everything is plumbed in and it's time to start testing loops. So the preamp of the amplifier is in loop six as well as is the volume pedal. I've got one side going back to the return of the mono amp, the second side going back to a return of a second amp. So one preamp, two outs for the power amp so that we've got, uh, use our stereo effects. Um, you can see that in the signal path diagram here. So that, that uh, distortion is just the distortion from the overdrive channel of the amp. Right, I've got the fuzz in the tuner auxiliary loop. Great. Uh, let's see. Troll booster. Very nice. And the chorus. Cool. Zen drive. Great. Phase 90.
Lush. Uh, stereo delay in the timeline. <laughs> Nice and stereo rotary with the Lex. Awesome, dude. It's ridiculous, man. It doesn't it sound so great. Good. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. So, right. Everything works. Brilliant. Let's start getting things, a few, th few things to stick down, some cable tidy. And uh, I think the next stop will be when young Mr. Kilmister arrives tomorrow. We shall take him through the, uh, the new board. Okay, hey everyone, uh, so Dave has turned up, we're going through the board now. Uh, I'm just gonna take Dave through the, the features. That's, so if I just... So it's the same as before, you've got one preamp into two power sections. Yep. Okay. Um, so if I, you'll hear this, if I turn this off, if you play for us for a sec. Mm -hmm. just, that's just one power section. I just, I want to hear that with a bit of stereo reverb. That's, um... That's awesome. That's wonderful. Isn't it amazing? Stereo delay. Wow. We love that. And then when you hear it with the bit of stereo delay and stereo Leslie. Hmm. That's nice. Excellent. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. All My right. pleasure. That's quite nice. That's awesome. <laughs> There's a few things I want to go over. Sure. Obviously. Gee, good to see you again. It's good to see you too again, man. Um, it really is. I want to talk about the guitars. I want to talk about the new tour. There's been loads of uh, footage going around mm -hmm. that I've been jumping oh, on. And I okay. Well, I've just been, because I haven't, you know, this is the first time I was seeing you do this. Oh, right. Um, Whatever. Yeah, I've never been to oh a project God. gig before. It's taken you 17 years to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I've been busy. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, huge excited. The clips that I've seen, it sounds amazing. Which is partly your fault. <laughs> very, very <laughs> tiny bit, if, if at all. I want to start, first time we met, uh, you were playing for Stephen Wilson. Now, I had, of course, known, I've known of you since you won the very first ever Guitarist magazine. Wow. Thing, and it was like- 1991. Yeah. I was about that big. No, I wasn't. And you started doing so. I remember you, you did a version of Shy Boy for that. <laughs> yes. And that was like, and I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then a friend of mine, you were at a guitar show somewhere, and he says, oh, I've just seen this guitar player. He was everything I've ever wanted to be. He was just, he had this touch and tone, and, but 
he could play changes as well. And, and it's, what's his name? Dave Kilminster. I went, yeah, yeah, that's this guy. Wow. So I've been sort of keeping an eye on you for a long time. That sounds really that weird. Does. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I heard you got this gig and it was like, yeah, of course. It's, you know, it's perfect. I kind of missed out on Pink Floyd growing up. Right. I heard Dark Side at a friend's house and I liked it, but um, the stuff I was more drawn to, I guess, was a little heavier, a little okay. more rocking. Um, huge Queen fan. Right. Um, that's one of the things that probably got me into music, actually. Okay. Uh, watching the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the video. I mean, I loved the single. In fact, I'd, I'd heard Killer Queen on the radio and I thought, Okay, this is cool. And then Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm like, wow. Saw it on TV. And uh, this is before I started playing, but I was playing piano. Right. And, you know, it starts off with um, harmonies and piano mm. and a big rocking ending. And I just thought, this is everything that I like, kind of all glued together in a fabulous song. So um, I took up guitar probably about three or four months after that. Right. Um, but it was always bands I was, I was into. Okay. I wasn't really into guitarists sure. as such. Um, I loved uh, Led Zeppelin, obviously, as well. Mm. Um, this girl that I knew at school, she used to make me these sort of mixtapes of, of The Who and Nazareth. And, and obviously the radio during that time as well, during the 70s. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, you get everything from... The Eagles, the David Bowie, Michael Jackson, Elton John, it's just all... But you've got to remember Captain and Tennille were in there as well. They were. They were. We're now here, we've got Isolation Caves under the stage. Yes. Everything was on in-ears. On yes. And this is the first time you've done this. Yes. Weird? Utterly bizarre. Right, okay. Really, really, I mean, as I, as I mentioned earlier, playing and having sound coming out of a speaker in front of me, it was like, whoa, it's been, it's been years. Right. Really. It's been years, and that's, that's kind of, um, <sighs> it's part of the reason why I still use valve amps, is, sure. is the, there's that sort of symbiotic relationship, I guess. Absolutely. Between the guitar and the speakers, and, you know, it all kind of, it lives and breathes together. And um, yeah, I guess, I, you know, it's one of the things about being older, I guess, I'm, I'm just from that generation that just wants to get a loud amp and crank it up and it just feels different. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I hated it to begin with. Sure. I really did. First, I remember rehearsals. I'm, in fact, at the end of the first day, I looked down at my guitar and it was just covered in blood because I was trying to f feel something. Yeah. And subconsciously, I'm just hitting the guitar yeah. harder to to wow. feel that and it wasn't obviously it wasn't happening sure so i just shredded my fingers on the strings I, I wanted to ask you so one of the things i was conscious of when building the rig how do you prepare for a tour like this when you're playing some of the most iconic guitar parts in the history of rock and roll right you know i remember seeing clips of you on the wall mm -hmm. you know i mean Far out, man. It must have been. What was that like? It was scary. It was right. really scary because essentially, I mean, it looks great. I, it I looks saw, amazing. Yeah, it looks like the second coming or something. Huge spotlights and um, you know the, the screen exploding in colour when Roger hits it and playing the high notes. And, yeah, but actually, really, I'm just, I was just stood on this um, kind of like a cherry picker. Right. You know, so it's really wobbly. There's no, you're not strapped in or anything crazy like that. You're just stood there, balanced. And it's, it's almost like standing on a boat. Um, Up that high? Yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. So, and I had to learn very quickly how to, to do that because there's a part in the solo which kind of went up to there. So I'd do that and I, you know, the whole thing would just move. So I had to play kind of slightly with bent legs like this. So, right. you know, kind of like a, Kung Fu kind of thing. So you'd bend, you'd do that, but you'd do that. So you, you know, you'd shift your, shift your body weight. It's ridiculous, terrifying. And some of the shows we did, I remember one particular one in Chicago, 
it was uh, it was uh, outdoor baseball stadium. The wind was whipping up off the uh, off the lake. It was absolutely freezing, and it was so windy that the wall was moving. So oh I'm stood word. here. The only thing I've got as a point of reference is the wall. Right. And the wall started moving, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. And it's freezing to death. I can't even feel my fingers. Right. It's like, please get me down. I don't want to be up here. <laughs> but then you watch the video, and it's like, it, okay, it I, yeah, looks I can do amazing. It, yeah. it looks yeah. amazing. What prep goes into being able to step out on the stage with the Roger Waters mm -hmm. and play that stuff? I'm trying to get as close as possible um, with regards to the solos. Right. Every bend, every quarter tone nuance, every, every little phrase. I want to get it as close as possible to the record. Right. Um, because I don't sound like sure. David at all. Sure. I don't play like him naturally. It's not my, you know, it's not really in me. But um, so I just try and play it as much like the record as possible. I don't worry too much about the sounds. Mm. Um, I'm not going to be you trying know, to copper sound. No. No, because you've got to get a uh, sound that you're moved. Yes, with. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, I try. I tried one or two pedals. There was a a big muff that I tried, and I thought, no, no, it's not me. Sure. It's not me. I use the fuzz face instead, and it's it's close enough yeah. that um, if I play the right notes in the right order. That sounds people, cool. yeah, people think it sounds like like the record, even though it actually doesn't sound like the record at all. But right. I think that's the most important thing, and I do. I, I try and play the parts, even the little mistakes, even the little things that right. on the records that are just, you know, because that kind of mistakes sort of make it personal. Yes, yeah, uh, make a, it human. That first solo in um, uh, another brick in the wall, you know, there's oh, a kind God. of like a major six in there over the over what should have been a you know minor six something but it's what i want to hear it i want to hear <laughs> oh, it oh god um no that's the patch i use for it um It's actually really clean. Yeah. But it seems to work with the band. Right. If, if there's that something, bit of projection. Yeah, if there's something that I've learned from doing this, it's it's that um, you know, the, the cleaner you can get your, your sounds, especially the overdrive sounds, the more the more you're gonna you're gonna hear it in a place like this. Right. You know. And it is really clean on the record, mm. you know. Les Paul, um, P nineties, but yeah. it's still quite um, you can hear every every single note. So that's that's the patch that I use for that. Um, this is the beginning of the set, I think. Uh, I kind of hate letting the delay do the work though. I'd rather kind of go. Because it's kind of, <laughs> I've never relied on, I don't like relying on, on effects. Even though they're all there and I can use them all, I, I just I I still come from that Van Halen background of sure. trying to get as much as possible yeah. out of the out of the guitar itself. So, look, look, got to talk about the guitars. They look absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, you like it? Yeah, I really do. So, uh, your Rose, the guitar that I yes. guess you're most well known for playing. Yes. Um, the old Sir. That was the with, first one they made. Right. For me. And it's and a really it beautiful. 
thing, and you know. Yeah, and, um, it, and it was, uh, they made it for me and it was plain. Right. Um, so, and I liked it, I thought it sounded great, but it was just, it doesn't make me want to play it. So I gave it to my girlfriend at the time. I said, can you make this a bit more interesting? So she did some, uh, some wood burning on it. Right. So that, all that stuff was actually burnt into the wood with a, so you cool. know. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm guessing this, this rose on yeah. here, the sort of a... Yeah, this is the next uh, evolution, I guess, if you like. Um, I've been looking for, these, for, the, for a guitar like this for ages. Right. 24 frets, three pickups, tremolo. So kind of essentially a strat, but with a, with a telly body. Okay. Um, there's a few things. I mean, there's no lacquer on the neck. Is that a um, roasted maple? Or? It is. Yeah. Really Rip. tall frets. Um, the bodywood is chestnut. Oh. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> I've never heard of this before. No. But, well, I mean, I've obviously heard of chestnut, but not... As a, as a guitar, yes. as, a, as a tone wood. Yes. Well, apparently it's what they use. Um, they, they use old uh, wine barrels. Wow. Yes. Okay. So they're That's very... That's very cool. Yeah. They're very ecologically friendly, um, right. are the guys at Paletti. They're wonderful people. And... Um, From Italy. From Italy, yes. Um, Firenze, May in I? fact. Absolutely. So the, the pink one was the, the one I designed first. Right. Um, I mean, I just, well, I probably designed them about three or four years ago okay. with, with uh, the help of my wife and her um, Photoshop skills. And. Um, the neck is amazing. Yeah. I, there's something about no lacquer, which yeah. just, it, you know, every, in fact, everyone that plays it, like, wow, this was really good. It does, it? it feels beautiful. Why do people put lacquer on necks? I have no idea. Yeah. Dude, that is so cool. That isn't is that, so cool. Isn't that the best thing about it? Oh, them? mate. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased for you, buddy. That is brilliant. Yeah, we're, we're going to do, um, there's going to be a run of these. Um, we're, we're just um, sorting a few things out, but they, they're going to, they're going to, uh, go into production um, as a designed by kind of thing because people have been asking apparently. Sure. But um, yeah, they, they feel great, they sound great. I love these things to bits. The tremolo is amazing. Um, you can do all the Jeff Beck stuff on it. Um, should you should you wish to? I don't even know if I should even attempt anything vaguely Jeff Beck. Uh, Sort of. It's not quite right, but you know. That's amazing. But it, yeah, so it does all that um, yeah. silly stuff. It does all that stuff if you want it to. Um, it's just, um, this is really quite, it's taking my head off at the moment. It's amazing. It is amazing. It sounds incredible. Let's get something with a bit of uh, stuff on it. Uh, maybe that one. That's the one I use for uh, So you can hear all the uh, it's just a, such a nice um, That's the um, the full tone Univibe thing which sounds really The Deja cool. vibe, yeah. Days yes. Um, and do. and I remember because this had to be cream, it this did. one. So when we were building the board, because you, you had another one, a, a, another, uh, a black which was one, a black and, like, one. and it's like, no, we need to, uh, it does the sound of a Univibe is, is cream. Yeah. We've got to find a cream one. It is. I know it sounds really stupid. No, but, I, um, I totally get that. Right. R Red is the of, right color for the fuzz. Yes, because um, that takes your head off. Yeah, so. totally. <laughs> Man, it sounds it's, really um, beautiful. I, I forget, because I'm so used to hearing the Brunettis as a rock machine, the clean sound is oh, clean, yeah. really beautiful. That's the first thing I ever heard from a Brunetti was, was the clean sound. Right. Because um, it was coming up to the wall tour, and I thought, I need an amp that does really good clean and really good overdrive. I, did, I didn't want to do what David does with, you know, just getting a really clean amp and then and, just putting uh, yeah, sure. fuzz and stuff in front of it. So yeah, Guthrie actually suggested it, and um, 
Marco very kindly brought down a head in a 4x12 for, for Guthrie and I was, I was playing mainly rhythm so I just brought down a 2x12 and I plugged it in with a clean sound I thought that's beautiful yeah that's just a beautiful clean sound and then I put the overdrive on it's like but that sounds like Van Halen how yeah, are you, right how is that coming out the same it's amp? a hard it's, thing to do yeah so especially even just speaker choice right to be able to get those sorts of sounds out of one speaker yeah but I remember hearing your Brunetti's and Stephen's uh, Bad Cat uh -huh. in like together when you guys are playing it was like it was just awesome but yeah. no I think that they're really stunning sounding things they are love them to pieces uh, in fact everything's good I, I was probably gonna I was thinking of making one or two little changes to the board but um, sure. nothing nothing drastic everything everything sounds great everything's working yeah because it's weird I, I, I know you can name these things I just haven't done it I've just memorized 42 yeah. different presets <laughs> So if you name the song, it's like, oh, okay, that's that one, yeah, yeah. Sure. This is uh, this is the kind of. Um, I don't use this on for this guitar. It's actually that guitar. That's the um, um, the Have a Cigar. All right. Song. Um, Nice. That's not even that's a rhythm sound. I haven't even got to the solo sound yet. This <laughs> sounds massive. Yeah, it's uh, it's not even in stereo yet, but with that with the you know yeah. the whole whirly goodness is um Mate, that makes me happy. It really, yeah. <laughs> me too. It's beautiful. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm using on there because I program these. I, as you probably remember, it was all last minute. Yeah. As things generally are with me, unfortunately. I don't know why, but, um, you know, so the first time I set up any of these sounds was in rehearsals. Right. In America. First time I plugged any of these guitars into an amp was, was Portugal for the first day of rehearsal. Okay. Literally not plugged them in. Right. I picked them up from Matt, drove them straight down to um, to the shipping place and that was it. Off they went. Yeah. Amazing. So, I, I mean, I would dearly love just to sit down and spend a couple of days with this rig and I could kind of tweak it. And, sure. You know, there was, there was something I found, uh, it's embarrassing, I don't even know if I want to tell you, but there's something I found on the board that, so, oh, that's how that works, with the, the volume thing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realise you had to just put the green light on as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you can turn it on, so, press the button. I know. <laughs> I know, but it's, you know, you're rehearsing. It's like, right, okay, Roger's ready. Yeah, yeah. Here we go, oh, one, two, go. three, four. Sure. Um, okay. I think it sounds absolutely superb. The, there's a clarity and the, the attack, the final note that you're getting, like this whole thing, it's just so nice. Like really yeah. bright there. Thank you. Really great. Yeah. I, I like that, especially in a room like this. I mean, yeah. you know, I've got that, the big sky. It's like, why have I got a big sky? I've got, when you're playing rooms like I've this? I've got a big room. It's, uh, it's even better. So I don't really use much reverb in general. Hardly at all. I've, I've, as I said, I've been cleaning things up and backing things off, and just so that you know, someone way up there can actually hear every right. single, every single mistake that I make <laughs> in glorious stereo. Yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Right. It is mildly terrifying. That's that's the other thing about a gig like this that you can't actually prepare for. Right. You can't. It's like you can't prepare for jumping out of an aircraft sure. necessarily. You can't tell someone how scary that is. You actually have to stand there and go, oh my God, this is really scary. Right. And then just do it. And it, the, 
the show, it does feel like that sometimes. We did a live broadcast the other day, um, live to cinemas all over the world from Prague. And yeah, they, I mean, that's it. Show starts, whatever Away happens, happens. Yeah. yeah. And it is terrifying. You can't, you can't prepare for that. You just have to try and stay focused, stay calm. Um, because a lot of this stuff is really easy. You know, a lot of this, uh, what have we got? Uh, things like, things like that. It's very, very easy to do, mm. you know, but add 50,000 people <laughs> with some cameras and some dry ice and, you know, and then it becomes like one of the hardest things <laughs> in the world to play. Yeah, right. It just is. Yeah, so. And you can't, um, yeah, so, in answer to your question of how do you prepare for this, some of it you just you can't. Can. You just try and get as ready as possible. Mm. Um, practice the tune so you, you know that. I don't, I don't, I'm very lucky. I, I do tend to learn things very quickly. Sure. Um, so I've, I've never had to spend too long listening to the stuff. You know, I'll, I'll, sometimes I just write it out. Right. Um, and then during rehearsals, I'll just grab the the sheet out and I'll just play it and then... Has that been a big help, being able to notate yeah, things? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's not something I missed when I couldn't read music, but now that I can, it's really handy. Sure. Um, I, I always played by ear, I couldn't... Uh, I was always self-taught. I went, I went for one guitar lesson once. Right. And... Very effective guitar lesson. Well, I, I, it lasted 10 minutes because I walked out. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, took, I tuned up with my um, classical guitar. And the guy sat there with his classical guitar and he says, OK, right, right, let's, let's play this. And it was something like, um, I can't even remember what it was, you know. It's something like that. And I said, I'm not going to waste my time learning that and practicing it for a week because I don't I, it's not something I wanted I wanted to play you know the rain song or yeah, something right. interesting and he said no we're doing we're doing this and I said no you're doing that I'm, I'm going home <laughs> I put my guitar on my case and I, I sold it off and that was it that was my only guitar lesson but it was very interesting it actually um, I kept that in mind when I used to teach right that how okay. important it is show people stuff that they what actually want to play. Want to play. Mm. That's really good. I've had people come in and, you know, years ago and they, they'd say, well, how, um, I suppose you, you want me to read music. I said, not if you don't want to. Well, what do you want to do? And it's like, well, I've always wanted to play this tune. Sure, off we go. And then if there's a technical thing in that, then I, then we Give them of, other, yeah, yeah, work around. Yeah, 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 yeah. we can analyze that and work on some exercise and stuff. So it's actually, moving in in that direction mm. um yeah it was a very interesting guitar lesson because it's uh <laughs> i'm just i'm just delighted to finally get to see you do this and um, i'm a little nervous tonight actually now why well because you're in the audience for a start crying out loud <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> it's always been you know because i've been doing your boards for a while now and it's always been an honor to do that for you well and uh you know thank you for getting us in here and doing this this is awesome now my pleasure I, I really hope you enjoy it tonight yeah. um it's yeah awesome. yeah it's it's a it's a different show i mean you, you see they're just starting to mess around with visuals and stuff now mm. it's it's kind of ridiculous um the whole thing this thing moves oh really yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean, the, the whole scale of it is, is kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. And if you let yourself get lost in that, then you'll just, you'll mess up really badly. Right. Um, you just have to, you know, this is my little spot, this is my guitar. Let, yeah, I can, yeah, I'll do this. I know the parts, let's uh, give it a go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope for Brilliant. the best. Oh, mate, thank you so much. No, pleasure. Really yeah. appreciate it. Um, Brilliant. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to Dave, of course, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Man, that was awesome. Thank you!